What have I got till 415, 445? 445. 430. Okay. I, I have one announcement to make before you start. Okay. And we're going to make one after you're done. Too. Well, yeah. I don't want anybody to hey, you don't your, care about this that. This is your conference. <laughs> Do as you will. Make yourself at home. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but I think I'm ready for that water now. You're doing a good job. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm not talking much. I feel like I've got dead air. I haven't heard any dead air. Done well. So it's uh, losing all the weight, change your, your work at all? How you work? Um, I am not as strong. I've lost, I've lost a bunch of muscle mass. And it really came crashing home the other day, uh, about, about two months ago. We had this big heavy rail. And we had gotten there, gotten it off the truck, put it up on the stairs, drilled the holes, made it all work. Then we had to, and fit it. Then we were going to haul it away to powder coat. And there were three of us. And it was heavy and awkward. And I had, you know, two guys go up the stairs, and I held the bottom, and we got it down and we're next to the truck and I can't get it up anymore alone. I, and so I said, okay. And, and one of the guys down there is really strong and the other guy's pretty strong. And I've always been, you know, one of the strongest guys in the shop. Right. And I said, I can't get this up alone. So you come down, we'll get it up. I'll hold it. Cause you know, once I'm here, I can right. hold it. Right. Then you guys get your end up and we'll just onto the truck. And it was probably a 250-pound rail or more. Uh, and, it, and it's long and, and, and a little bouncy in the middle. So he and I got it up, and I just barely had it. And he went down to the other end, and as they started to hump it up, it kind of went like this, all this, and, and my right arm gave way. Oh. I just turned it down. Um, Anyway, my right arm gave way, came down to my chest, I went down, landed on my lap. Um, I wasn't damaged, it was scary. But, um, but I realized last year I could have done that. And anymore, I can't. It really didn't. No, well, they did it orthoscopically, so they just did little holes and they, they went in and I was up walking around that night. Um, you know, the, the surgery really isn't what it used to be. You know, it used to be they cut you all the way across, you know, peel you open and... Yeah, you know, and, and, and it's like hernia surgery. And this time, nothing. Big deal, so what? Um, well, and it does, but, well, and then you stop eating. You know, you're eating two ounces a day, or two ounces a meal, three meals a day. You know, I am not eating as much in a week as, as a big eater sits down and eats in a sitting. Um, and so, and the weight starts falling off of you, and you're not hungry, and... You're going to lose muscle. But, but, yeah, I lost some muscle. I lost a bunch of muscle. And... But this really isn't major surgery like hip surgery, you know, I mean. Uh, actually, I'm. what that's supposed to do. And I'm pretty well balanced there. And okay, now then, how am I through here? So I'm about two and a half there, two and a half there, 
Oh, I'm pretty centered. Okay. So yeah, I'm I'm ready to rock. Let's. Okay. We need to bring some people in. Okay. Here, hit the tail. Ladies and gentlemen, the mouth is about to move again. <laughs> you haven't lost that. No, no, I still have my lungs. Did you speak it up? Demonstration here. It's BYOB. We have water and pop and stuff out there in the cooler. It's in some eats. It's going to be right out here under the tent. Uh, bring your own booze. And our next guy is guitar. Yes. Here we go. Paul. While you were elsewhere, we. Uh, Got this joined together. Um, gas welded it, filed it a little bit, uh, moved it over to right in here, this area here, so it kind of hides. Uh, it's not, you know, if it were right, uh, if it were right there, it would glare at us, and, and over in here, it's it's a little less uh, obvious. Um, Tweak the middle just a little bit. Tried to make these, you know, pretty much straight line that way. This seemed about centered. Way I took a heat in the middle and just mashed it down. For those of you who didn't see that, uh, not that that's particularly interesting, but um, now this ring is loose because this expanded and this is now free. And and when you curve those, it that flat curves, you know, as, as it sinks down, it shrinks in. And, and while I will admit I have never had the grief that this gave me before, uh, I, I did this time and I was so glad I could share it with you. Um, this has got a little bit of a flat spot here in it now because of the tweaking we did to get it in. I'm just going to see if I can't bring that out a little bit. And, oh, I might have. And, you see that? Yeah, that's, that's a little rounder now. Um, what's that? Safety glasses. Heaven knows, we wouldn't want to damage me. Somebody could get hurt, it might be me. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a heat on each of these and kind of push these down to flat. Now, and I think I'm gonna push this one first and then that one so that this can balance that way and we might still be able to tap it back and forth if, if this becomes off center to, relative to that. This one, the these inside one is no longer moving. It's no longer moving. Uh, so we need to make sure that this outer ring stays about centered. So we're going to gently push this down and push these down. And uh, in fact, we might even could do a little bit of that cold here on the, the treadle hammer. Now we'll. Yeah, it's moving. And when we get that warm, we can kind of tap this. See, this is a little narrower here than there, so I can, when this is warm, I can move that back out, straighten it up some. Um, you know, we've got tweaking to do. Yeah. This is our last chance to adjust the outside.
And it's not the same size as the jig anymore. You know, it's, it's a little bigger than the jig because we bent and tweaked and mashed and, you know, upset the middle and, and when you overlap two bars, you know, everything wants to grow. The, the middle ring has grown. It's, it's probably a half inch OD bigger than it was because it's been pushed eight times around those four bars going over it twice each. So, you know, it, it, it all just grows a little. Like a Tolkien story, it grows in the telling. Um, you notice how you, you go up when you say that. You know, it grows in the telling. Um, one's really not too bad. Okay. Yeah, I think I can live with that. And let's go over here and mash that a little bit. And that's not very probably about what we're going to get. And we might want to bring that Take a heat on that and really mash it. So, does anybody want to go home and weave? The next thing I show you is something that is really easy. Um, it's something that I like to tell people I invented. And the reason that I'm willing to say that I invented it is because I had never seen anything like it that I remember ever seeing, having seen demonstrated. Um, and to the best of my knowledge, it is wholly original to me. And I came up with it. Therefore, 
I invented it. But let me tell you a story. I was I was working on a house. And I was standing at a meeting of the owner, the builder, the architect, the engineer, and probably some other people. Um, and we were talking about the metal work that I was going to do. And I said, fine, everybody, that, you know, the owner said, you know, I like this one thing. And the architect said this other thing. And the builders go, you know, we've got to keep the cost down. And finally, I turned to the group and I said, who am I working for? And they all looked at me like, how dare you ask this question? I said, I can only respond to one person. Who's in charge? Who's got final say? Who do I listen to? And everyone involved in the project is here. Who do I listen to? And they were all like, well, obviously me, you know, but the husband and the wife and the architect, you know, and I got six or eight people in front of me. Exactly, it was the wife. Um, but I wanted that clear in front of everybody. And I went home and I thought, who's building this house? The architect drew the plans. He built this house. The engineer goes through and marks that off and says, this has got to be such, and this has got to be such, and I've engineered, and we've got to have all this stuff. I built this house. The builder hired every sub on the job, me included. Who built this house? He built this house. Now, every sub on the job did the physical work that made this come to pass. We built this house. The bank, who is giving the loan for this thing, put out every dime that brought everybody together. They built this house. Who built this house? Well, that's a good question. It was the wife. But uh, <clears throat> now then. I talked to Dickie Bent, who showed me the thing that I'm going to show you. And he started this. I can't tell you who was the first blacksmith that showed me. Well, no, I can tell you. It was my cousin, JC. He was the first blacksmith who really actually showed me anything. He got me into blacksmithing. Um, Peter Hapney came and did a demo in Utah, and he said, if you're used to going right, go left. If you're used to going up, go down. Do something different. Think out of the box. Do things you've never done. You'll make scrap metal, but you might come up with something really wonderful. Um, so I took something that I had seen before. I'm a little cold right here still, so. And I did something different with it that uh, I had never seen before, and it became something wholly different than what I started with. I invented it. Or my cousin, or my brother-in-law JC invented it, or Dickie Bend invented it, or Peter Hatney invented it, or we all invented it, and I'm showing it to you, and you'll do something with it, and you will do something different than I've thought about, and you invented it. Um, I'm desperate to take the credit. I love credit. I like getting it, I like cashing it in. You know, I, I, I want the credit. But who invented what I'm going to show you? Well, if it was me, of course it was me. Who else could it be? Um, Yeah, that was what I wanted. Am I straight or am I not? Um, and I, I do have to tell you, I was in a meeting with Yuri Hoffi. Now, Yuri Hoffi has an ego that uh, is incredible. Yeah, you know, he did, uh, Yuri Hoffi knows, and he's come to America to save us from ourselves. 
um, because he knows. Um, that's relatively a little straighter than it was. Um, but he was talking about he had some need, and he invented this pair of tongs to fulfill his need, and, and he invented them. And he was so proud because nobody else had ever had a pair of tongs like this, and, and people had muddled through with this same need for years and years. And, and he was the one that had brought salvation to the world because he had invented, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much going to work. He had invented these tongs. And he was so proud. Because in one day, he picked up this British book, printed in 1912 or 17, something like that. And he opened it up, and there was his tongs. And he went, damn, there is nothing new under the sun. Maybe I didn't invent these. I just rediscovered them. Is that before he invented the Czechoslovakian? Yeah. And before he invented the only anvil worth forging on, and, and, and before, he came, before he saved America from ourselves. Um, so yeah, but, but in, a, in a rare act of humility, even he admitted that, you know, just because you discovered something doesn't mean you actually invented it. I like to think that I invented this, if not for the first time, then at least again. Um, and that's, that's what I have chosen to believe. And so when I tell you this, if, if, you, if you choose to give me credit for having uh, done it the first time you've seen, um, I would appreciate that. But if you say, Paul didn't really invent this, well, you're probably right. So now I have two. Okay. Now then, I had those two pieces. Oh. This is what I'm going to show you next. Pass those around. Uh, um, and I want you to look at this and see if you can figure out how I did it. And we should be fine. I'm going to have time to do it. Yeah, still got some dark spots.
want to move that whole thing kind of over that way. So let's That's a little better. Okay, let's take a good screaming heat on that and we'll mash that down to flat. We've only got one more to do. Now then when I mounted this in the rail, uh, the question rose, how do you mount this, you know, in something? Do you wrap something onto it? Do you, that's a little busy, you know. So I just took some 5 8 bar, rounded up the end, bandsawed down through that much, then ran a hot cut into that, split it out, made a clevis out of it, basically, put it onto a bar, drilled through, riveted it. So da dunk da dunk down, up, it's held with, four bars, which then got us to legal spacing because we still are constricted by the four inch rule. And, uh, and life was good. So uh, did you mount them this way or this way? You'd think I'd remember. Yeah. And I don't. <laughs> That's an excellent question, Dan. I can go home, consult the pictures, and get back with you. You know how well I return emails. Well, it's a lot less rumply than, than this one. Um, I was telling you about the top job competition. Yes. It is an unwritten law in top job that if you made money on the job, it does not win. Only money losing jobs win. Now, price is never discussed. Um, somebody actually made a point that if at a professional organization get together, we discuss price, that's price fixing and that's like federal crime. So while people used to say, you know, I charge $100 a, put, a, a foot or, or you know, $1,000 a chunk or, or whatever. Price is never discussed. Profit gets, the potential or not of profit does get discussed. And, and it's like, you know, I lost money on this. It deserves to win. Um, and, and sometimes that is like the defining criteria is how much money did you lose so that you have some right to even enter. Uh, it's sad, but true. Um, and I made money on this job, therefore I did not win. Um. Somehow I expect that might have been that foot. Um, you know, you, you pay your money, you take your chances. True enough. But um, I won 
two awards this year for the first time since 93. 20 years I've been entering this contest, not winning. Um, I am so used to not winning. I've had some really good jobs that didn't win. Um, I did a stairway that, that I'm proud of to this day. It, it's the neatest stairway. It, it, visually beautiful. We hired professionals, got good pictures, had a good thing. Everybody loved it. I came in for it. <sighs> At least I like to believe I came in for it. They don't actually tell you, but you know. But I'm sure I came in fourth. And there were some killer stairways. I mean, that year, oftentimes stairways complete is a small category. That year, it was the largest single category. And is there a brush anywhere? Uh, oh, that'll do. Yeah, okay. Um, I will at the end. Okay, and I should have been brushing this every time, and I was so busy enjoying your lovely company that. Uh, I neglected my duties. Um, anyway, this will go in the auction. I'm, oh, we got kind of a lump there. That's a little distressing. There's probably no massaging that now because we are locked. But uh, um, anyway, pretty much. That's the essence of the process. Uh, I challenge you to do this better, invent some better way. Uh, if I helped invent that, then, then fine. If not, well, I've shown you what not to do. Um, anyway, that's, that's kind of a fun piece. People see that and they look at it and if, if they have any knowledge at all, they go, how did you weave that? Slowly, painfully. Burned myself a lot. Um, so. Uh, the two pieces I sent around, are they still going around? Oh, you were hoarding them. There is the old joke about that. The girl goes into the bank with a bag full of quarters. She says, I, I need to get these counted and, and deposit them. And she, you know, the teller goes, my goodness, did you hoard all of these? And she says, no, my sister hoard half of them. Uh, but, uh, uh, I, guess, I guess the days of two-bit horrors are over. Um, so, did anybody have any clues how we did this? Okay. What, what? On the, if you could set them up. Um, Can you zoom in on those or? Anyway, it's a kind of a neatly woven piece. Um, and people wonder how it comes to pass. Did, did any of you wonder how I did this? I mean, do you all know how I did this? No. Uh, okay. Uh, care to share that with us? Please. What, 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 or, what that it, it's this material. Well, when I look at that, do you remember the little weavings that you, the little lanyard used to make in, in uh, Boondoggle. 4 H camps and something like that? With, uh, Boondoggle. Four pieces laid over each other, the square braid. That's what put me in mind of that. Uh, yeah. It's. Okay, right there's the middle. Twisted, count the number of twists in the direction. Pull the 
second rod and half. Does the one opposite direction the same way? Ah, wrong. 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 Is that the most annoying noise in the world? <laughs> my wife hates it when I do that. I love my wife dearly. Um, why do I delight in making her miserable? Um, torch. I'm going to go a little bigger tip because I have a bigger tip. Uh, I'm going to need somebody to hold. Would, would you come and hold the torch for me, please? Hold the torch. Okay. Oh. Okay. Now then, that should be vicinity of, yeah, that's the middle. Um, and that's about on the middle of this bar. And we're tight. Then, so we have One bar wrapped around another, centered both ways. Okay? Then, we get what grip we can get. And we do a tight, hot bend. Now, Dick Dent from England who has been here, I believe, showed me this. And he was like, well, I'll show you, but don't you show anybody else, you know. That is <laughs> okay, now then, I, I endeavor to keep these two tight. Oh, I'm actually pretty much done with you for a bit. Uh, keep those tight together, and I try and keep them tight onto here, you know, so there's, there's no gaps. I'm kind of of the opinion that if you um, if you heat the inside, then that's the part that's trying to compress and the outside stretching and And so that, that's where I do it. But you really only heat the part that's going to bend. And this goes pretty quick. Um, and there was a time when I remembered the, the ratio of, you know, with quarter inch bar, so much goes so far up. I don't remember what that is anymore, or I'd tell you but I just flat don't remember. Um, but we started with 36 inch long bars, which means that we had 18 inches sticking out each way and we can measure it uh, when we're done. And then we'll know. And so if somebody will help remind me, was this the note on the anvil? Um, how long did we wind up with with 18 inch bars? And that would be our ratio for quarter inch. It is different for 3 sixteenths. It is different for 5 sixteenths and 3 eighths. But it goes pretty quick. Um,
What's that? You know, it kind of is. And the first time I did this, I got really bored. And then I got to where, you know, I, I just really like doing this. I, I forget how much I like doing it. I, I've never done one in half inch, and I can't tell you why. But anyway, this is really cool if you hammer it like into a square. You know, you, you just run it square under the, the power hammer and, and true it up. And uh, you know, that's kind of a neat look. This makes a nice handle. It makes a good curtain rod end. You can do the first ring around uh, a round bar or a pipe or something like that. You can make a big ring on the end. And for the... Uh, you want to show that piece over there? Um, pass that around. You know, for the the home project or the, the the group project, that's the handrail we're doing, and that's the handle that we're doing for our piece. And instead of starting wrapping around the bar. We wrapped around uh, a round bar or something. I forget what it was we wrapped around. We're going there. We're going there. Yeah, Peter Hapney came out and he said, you know, you've got a way that you do things, and one of my standard lectures in my shop is designed by inertia. Now, Mark talks about inertia in very physical terms. You know, you, you hammer something, you know, you're fighting the weight that it has and all that. But there was a guy here, actually, that talked about when he was the head blacksmith at Stone County Ironworks. And they, they used to make grape clusters out of ball bearings. And they bought the ball bearings at the uh, tractor shop, you know, like the Massey Ferguson dealer or the, or the John Deere dealer, whatever it was. And it was the ball bearings that used to be in the hay baler or the swather or something like that. And it was a ball bearing that was readily available in stock in town. Um, and they didn't do a lot of grape clusters. And so they only needed them every once in a while. And when they did, you know, they'd go over to the tractor dealer and say, we need to buy some bearings. And they'd have them in barrels. Uh, because they were just loose bearings. And uh, so the criteria that they had for materials was in stock, in town, readily available. You know, this, this is good criteria. Um, and their supply was ready. Well, over the years, they redesigned their equipment, and they no longer stocked loose bearings. But Stone County Ironworks would go over there, and they'd, when they run out of bearings, they'd go over and say, we need some more bearings. We can order them for you. You know, OK, we'll, we'll get them. Um, so, they were still available, but they weren't as available. And because they had gone from an in-stock item to a special order item, they got ridiculously expensive. Well, Stone County Ironworks, that's what they'd always used. Ergo, that's what we will always use. It's what we use. Designed by inertia. 
It was no longer readily available. It was no longer cheap. They quit noticing, quit caring. This is what we use. That's what we used to use. It's what we used last time. It's what we will use next time. What more? You know, that, that's the answer. Go get these. Well, they had run out of them. And they said to him, you know, we need some more bearings. Well, where do we get them? We get them at the tractor dealer. So he goes over there, and, he, and it's some odd size, you know, 2964 or something like that, you know, and it's odd size of bearing. And, and they said, yeah, we can get those. It'll be six weeks. They'll be 50 cents a piece. Well, they were going to buy like thousands of them. So he goes back to the shop, and he said, why are we using this bearing? Well, because we've been using that bearing for the last 50 years. Well, yeah, but why are we using this bearing? We could get a half-inch bearing for 10 cents a piece. Why aren't we doing that? Well, we've always used this bearing. Resistance to change. It is designed by inertia. So, whenever you design something, as I tried to talk about my design of, of that, I looked at the, the equipment that I had on hand, the materials that I had on hand, the knowledge that I have in my head, you know. So for a number of reasons, I made the jig, I did the thing the way I did for reasons that made great sense at the time. Now then, you cut things with a hacksaw. You want to cut things with a hacksaw the rest of your life because that's how you've always done it. Or would you buy a bandsaw? Well, of course you'd buy a bandsaw. But inertia would have you saying, well, you know, maybe if I got a big job, you know, then I'd buy a bandsaw if I had a job that would pay for it. Well, if your truck blew up, would you wait until you had a big job before you go got another truck? No, you go get another truck. Hope you got some money in to pay for it. You would resist that inertia. But not everyone does. Older? I did one of these two feet long once. It gets pretty squirrely. So you, you keep moving it down in the vise. Oh, thank you.
I will just call that good. And what did I do with the rod? Oh. Okay. So Paul, how long is it? I don't know yet. We'll have to look. It's this long. It's exactly that long. Okay, we started off with um, Okay, we had about 18 inches of free material, and we have just about 10 inches, just under 10 inches of uh, braid. Okay? So a little bit over 50%. Yes? Yeah, now say you wanted to put the ring on the end to hold it up. That would soak up some material. No. You said you wrapped it around the pipe, too? Well, did, did you see how I started this? I wrapped it around the bar. Yeah, I saw that. You wrap it around something bigger and then take that out. As it is, on this end, on, on the beginning end, you can see, I'll show you. So that right there is wrapped around this bar when that bar was just straight all the way through. Okay, and we left that bar there and we just started wrapping with that bar while it's held by that one. Had we left a bigger ring and taken the thing out, we could then clamp that ring in the vise, lay that other bar on top, and then the ring bars would have been the first ones that we moved on over a straight bar. And then we would have wrapped, we would have just, yeah, which is what we did here. Yeah, how did you hold the pipe? Did you hold it this Well, yeah, I put the pipe in the vise. We, we, you know, we put something in the vise and we wrapped the bar around it. Uh, they wrapped the bar around it. I, I didn't do it, but uh, I told them how to do it and they did. Uh, so you, you wrap it around and, and it comes and does that and you have a ring. Clamp the ring in the vise. It's now like that. You lay something over the middle. You know, you, so you've got that bar going this way. You, you lay something on and you you fold this one over and that one over, and then you've got this one held, and you roll this one over both ways. That makes sense? Have you ever tried wrapping this around a mandrel? I have not. But you could, and you'd have invented something. <laughs> and I have been... A friend of mine just died on a motorcycle. I feel really bad about this. He was... In the midst of a divorce, he went up to his sister's place to get away from the bad situation. He was having a good day. Things were coming together. He wound up drunk one night, went to a party, got driven off from the party because he's a miserable drunk, and I went out on his motorcycle. Within minutes, he's crashed, mangled. They tried for a week to bring him back to consciousness. He died. What, what killed him? You know, his wife drove him off for, for whatever reason, perhaps good reason. His wife drove him off. His sister, who he was staying with, left town to go to some thing with her daughter. She was not there to support him. For some reason, he decides to drink when he'd quit six, eight months ago. He, 
that night, he, somebody serves him alcohol. He goes to a party. They say, you can't be here. Go away. All of these people contributed to his death. I think he killed himself. You know, he was drunk, got on a motorcycle. He drove. He died. That's sad. What contributed to that? Everything. So if you invent something, what contributed to that? Everything. Maybe even me. You know, but maybe you see some beautiful woman you'll never know walking down the street and she inspires you with her beauty. And you go home and you make something wonderful. You don't know this woman's name. You don't want your wife to know this woman's name. <laughs> you know what? But you were inspired. Who invented that? Was it the inspiration? Was it you? Was it your teacher? The first time I did a basket, I had a three-quarter by one-eighth slot punch that Mark Asprey had showed me how to make. I had never used it. I said, I could punch some holes with this, and I did. In a bar, it rolled into a ring, and then I rolled things up and that fit through. The three, two things would fit through the three-quarter by eight slot. Who made that basket? Was it Mark Asprey? It really was, because he taught me to make a slot punch that I had never used. And I, as I'm searching for inspiration, I'm looking through all this stuff, and I've got, well, here's a tool I've never used that, gee, I really ought to. I'll punch some holes. And I found a chunk of bar that was like 30 inches long, and if I space them about oh, that far, and it wound up being 10 slots, which wasn't an even dozen, which, you know, 10 because it seemed to fit in a scrap bar out of the rack with a tool I'd never used. What was the inspiration? Everything I know or ever had. Where does inspiration come from? Everywhere. Desperation. I had to make a gift to take that I owed somebody for, you know, I, I, they, they sell me at convention. And the, the deal is you get the gift of my choice a year from now. Well, we're 11 months into it. I need to make a gift of my choice. It's made out of stuff I have on hand in my shop at the time when I'm desperate. I used the punch I'd never used before. You know, did, did Mark inspire that? Well, yeah. Did the woman who bought me inspire that? Well, yeah. You know, did my wife say, have you got that thing done yet? What? Yeah. I'm inspired by lots of things. Desperation, tools, materials lying around that I never use. Uh, search for something I've never done. I wove my first basket. Developed a great respect for basket weavers. They're not just fools. They know things that you need to know. They could teach you a lot. Um, this is all gospel according to Paul. Uh, let's heat this up. That would have been January. January. Yes. And so I'm, I'm watching this demonstration sitting at one of the tables. And you sidle over with a ball jar with a metal handle on it. Pretty I cool. have that here. And you set it down in front of me. And I studied it for a little while. And then you took it away. And I went home. And I've been making them ever since. Inspiration. I've got one in the silent office. Lonnie Jensen. Put that in iron in the hat, and I won it. That's where I got it. And he got it from somebody, and it's on the internet. Okay. Well, I've got one in the silent auction. In here. Oh, I saw it. It's, it. Is it glued on, or is it no, just clipped? No, I was experimenting. That, that was my personal oh. one. I want to say, OK, what would it look like a little dot of glue? But no, it's pressure fit on it. OK. Anyway, yeah, and I've, my, I brought one with me, and it's well, probably the one that you saw. But uh, it's, it was a, a quart jar or a pint? Oh, the pint I did. The quart one is the one Lonnie made that I won. Uh, but I brought it. And um, anyway, inspiration is everywhere. And, and take the little things. I mean, I went to, when, when I discovered this, we had one of our Bonneville Forge Council meetings, and it was at uh, Jared. Jerry Hansen's place out in Elko. And not many people showed up. I think there were four of us out at his place, because it's 
a hike from Salt Lake. You know, it's 150 or 75 miles to get there. And so not a lot of people made the journey. He's got a beautiful shop, lovely place. And he had a little chunk of, of uh, quarter inch round bar and I said, but I know something I could do with this. And I did up one of these raspberry twists. Or raspberry weave or, I, I would like to have the whole thing if we can get it, but I can do one end first if we need to. Anyway, so I, I did it up and I said, you know, it makes a nice handle, it makes a good end of a curtain rod, makes, you know, an unusual, strange decorative thing. It, it's kind of almost organic, could go in the kitchen. You know, women like this, men like this, it, it's a good handle, it, it, you, know, it, you know, a variety of uses. And, and it was showed to me by, you know, this British guy who was, you know, pretty jealous of his stuff. Okay. Um, and then Peter Hapney popped into my head and he had done this demo and said, go left, try something you've never done, screw around, you know, just make some scrap metal. You know, a lot of it won't work. A lot of it you'll, you'll say, Phew, that's one of those things that I should never do again. You know, but find out what those things are. You know, and, and maybe you'll come up with something. And I, I started to twist this. And it went from really beautiful, you know, it started off really quite nice. And I twisted it and it got ugly. I went, oh, I have made scrap metal. And that's the last of the quarter inch round bar in the shop. You know, I'm not doing this again. Um, but I thought, well, if I've gone this far, I mean, I, I just about threw it under the sporge right then and there. And, but I thought, you know, if I've gone this far, what the hell? Keep going. So I did. And after a while, it changed. It became something it hadn't been. And, okay, bring it out and put the very end of it right in the vise. Okay. Okay, and we will turn this direction. You could go either direction. And it helps if you have like a twisting wrench or something like that, but anyway, at this point, I'm going, eh, this ain't beautiful. Scrap metal. But what the hell, we'll, we'll keep going. What have I got to lose, you know? If it's scrap metal, it might be, you know, it might as well be really serious scrap metal. And then it started to kind of flatten out. Do we have a... Well, actually, at this point, I think we're going to take another heat. Well, I think at this point, So, so this is not looking real provident yet, but, it, but it's getting close. Let's, let's heat that. And, um, well, we might be able to make one of the little ones work. That one's too big. But, well, uh, that one I think is tighter. Yeah, right in there, I think we can make that work. Okay. Paul, 
Yes, please. Back when you were working on this case, um, I am not. Did I curse and swear and offend you? Sideways. You what? I'm not skilled enough to hit in this direction. Then you need to practice. You could, you're likely to kink. If you don't take a wide heat, if you take, you say, oh, okay, right there I need to bend it, and you heat right there, and you bend it, it kinks. And then getting that kink back out, but yeah, if you heat this wide and then bend in the middle of that, that's better. But, but a lot of people say, well, I'll just put a torch on that and I'll bend it. Well, if, if you want to straighten something out, you may not want a localized heat. You want a more general heat so the whole thing can give. Um, or, or if I did heat up a larger bit in the porch, could I have, um, could I have then put it in the vise? Well, yeah, you can do anything you want. Rather than, I mean, I would just whip it in myself. <laughs> you need to practice more. Um, you know, there's, I, I just loved what Ernie said. We learn through trial and error, not through trial and rightness. You know, errors teach us things. Um, you learn what not to do. You know, the old story about Thomas Edison tried 10,000 things before he came up with what he actually put in the light bulb. You know, a human hair was one of the ones that showed promise. It lasted like 10 hours before it disintegrated and fell out. Uh, uh, the side that was in the vise before. Got that in right there, and, and it'll find itself. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, let me see. I think I need to straighten that. Yeah, that is the way I was going. I need to, because it gets squirrely. The bigger it is, the squirrelier it gets. clinker in there. We're not getting much air anymore. Probably could use some. That help, but. Um, anyway, you, you try things that work. You, you know, if, if trust your intuition. Okay. Most of the time. I, I've got a. I invented that story for you. Okay. Uh, Scott and I were doing a uh, public demo and we we're just messing around, wasn't busy, and so we, we'd done some twists and he said, well, what happens if we do a, a pineapple twist and we don't do the grooves in it? Oh, yeah. And so we did that and I said, wow, I've never seen this before. Anyway, I take a sample to the, the NOMA conference and I say, hey, Paul, come take a look at this, this twist here. And he walks up there and says, Oh, that looks like a pineapple twist without the grooves. Did I rain on your parade? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry.
Anyway, so at this point, if you look at this, um, and that lining up like that was yeah, like it, it just kind of flattened out. Can you? Well, you twist it until it flattens out. So you can actually see it progress up. Yeah, you, you see it start to flatten out. And when it does, you've got, uh, it's twisted around, those two are kind of twisted around each other, and then it crosses over, and then it twists, and it twists, and then it crosses over, and it twists, and it twists, and it crosses over. And, and there's, a, there's a pattern to it. And it's just serendipity that I found it. You know, who knew? Certainly I didn't. And then, what? If you twisted it the other way, would you get the same pattern? Or you get yeah, it would, just, it would just twist the other way. It, it, it goes both ways. I mean, it, because when you first braid it up, it doesn't have direction. You give it direction. And 3 16 is a little finer, but uh, um, anyway, it's, if we take this, and get a good heat on it, we can go to the power hammer and, and draw it out, and we can make, we can make that. You know, it's, um, or you can just leave it round. You know, it, it's, it's easy enough to just leave it round. Um, one way that you can kind of stretch it and, and and all that is if you've got a steel table and a come along, you know, a one and a half ton come along, or even a three quarter ton come along, you leave a loop on each end. You know, you, you leave some length and, and you bring that other end around and, and you make a loop there. And, and you start off with a loop like that other, like that one. And you put the thing in the forge, you take a screaming heat on it, you put one end on a hook welded to the table, you grab the other end with a come along and you stretch it and it goes to straight kind of opens out a little bit. You know, you get this kind of more open kind of thing that, that I don't have what you get. You, you have to pull it. I don't have enough pull. Um, but I got a come along. I got equipment. I have the technology. I am the Borg. There is no resisting us. And, uh, you know, it comes. Okay, and let's go to the power hammer. Okay, at this point, Now here we've got some openings, and it still shows very much the, uh, the weave and the twist. In fact, it may show it better at this point. Um, I have not, um, though perhaps if you wove, you know, like if you could get spring steel from garage door springs, 
you could do that. Um, I wonder if you would get a tight enough pattern to matter. Um, you like doing tables and masses. Yeah. You know, it, it, but it, it would be a really coarse, coarse. You'd, you'd have big chunks of, of hard, but you'd also have big chunks of soft. Um, though perhaps if you got two different brands of spring, maybe they'd be different or something. I, I don't know. I, no, I've never tried. consistent and now Francis always named twists after where he saw them and I've seen the Port Townsend twist, and I've seen the uh, Port Angeles twist, and, and you know, twist named after various other things. So in his honor, I guess I should name this the Elko twist. Uh, because it was discovered Elko, Nevada. Um, you can take this down thinner and make a very delicate handle. I, I made some of this really thin, and I. I did a copper bowl, and and I and, and this this bends kind of interestingly, you know, it, as it goes around. It's it's got all these twists, and some of them want to compress, and some of them want to open out, and you know, it, it gets interesting. But I I made a handle that came out and around like this, and then both of them went down and became the feet. So it was it was a foot, and then along the bottom of the bowl, and then out and a handle, and back and along the bowl, and down to a foot, uh, out of you know, one piece each side. Um, and I hammered it down to maybe an eighth of an inch thick, maybe a hundred thousandths, you know, fairly thin. Uh, and I'd done it out of three sixteenths bar, so the, it wasn't as heavy as this. It was, it was a lot more delicate. Um, now then, who's got a full on, oh, I have a full on. We're now back out to about 14 and a half inches. We started with 18. We've gotten just about full length, and, and we could easily get 18 out of this, which was the length of each one of those ends. Um, I've left this fairly thick, uh, fairly chunky, because it allows you to see the weaving a little better, um, which for the sake of this demo, I kind of liked. Um, and I, I love the holes in it. I, I really like the piercings because it shows that it's, it's twisted and it's. If you wanted it tight, like your sample, Well, and these, look at how, look at the thickness here. Well, actually, the thickness is about fairly much the same. About the width. Um, Close I can't tell. This might have been five sixteenths bar. This 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 might have been five. This might have started off thicker bar. Yeah, but would it have been forged down more? Yeah. Well, five sixteenths bar would have gotten wider, and then when it forged down, because it's got pretty square edges. See, yeah. So, yeah, it would. And and so I like this better than this. But I I used this for something I don't remember what. This was just a drop that I had left over. Uh, you know, and this was the, the end that, you know. Um, I think I'm out of time. This was my demo. I, I hope that, you know, it's been a 
Frau Kaufmann.